Hey guys, Tonic here, and today I would like to show you some of my favorite camp locations with pre-existing structures. Now these are in no particular order, there is no ranking system for these. These are just some really cool camp locations that have some pre-existing stuff to build around, and they can make for some really unique camps. So with that being said, let's get right into it. First up, we have a really cool pre-existing bunker over in the mire. It's right here on the map just to the right of Haven Church, and here you will find this bunker that is sort of built into this hill. Now you can place your camp anywhere inside and you will be able to build in here. There is a big open area and over in the back you have a kitchen and a bedroom. I have built a camp here before. I tried turning this place into a hobbit hole type thing from Lord of the Rings. Because it is kind of hidden, it's built right into the side of this hill. And it actually worked out pretty well, it wasn't too hard to build in here. You have a good amount of room to place tons of floor decor and wall decor. Also one quick tip for building in pre-existing locations, sometimes you will run into issues where you can't place items down. For example in the bedroom I can't place this bed down. And usually it's because the floor is slightly uneven. This is really easy to fix, all you have to do is place down a floor mat and then you should be able to place down your item. And again over here on this corner, I couldn't place down the set of armor. But all I had to do was place a floor mat and it worked right after that. Most of the time the floor mat sinks right into the ground so you can't even see it. Lastly, another awesome bonus with this location is that if you place your camp module in a good spot, you can easily make use of this destroyed building and behind the building there is actually a farm. It's a good sized farm, there is a lot of crops, and also it is a spawn location for random friendly NPCs. So right now I have the Raider Punk. Up next we have an awesome location that is located right here on the map, just south of Becker Farm in the Toxic Valley. Here you will find two pre-war houses that are in surprisingly good condition. And you can place your camp module in the middle and build in and around both houses if you wanted to. Now this location has another NPC spawn. Here I have a scavenger trader. And walking into the first house we have a living room, a small kitchen, and a bathroom under the stairs. Going up the stairs we have a bedroom with a single bed and a bunk bed. Now heading over to the second house, this one is a little bit bigger. It has a door and a good sized front porch. The other building didn't have a door, but at least this one does. But entering on the first floor we have a living room and a big kitchen with a chemistry station. And heading up the stairs we have a small area here and a bedroom and a bathroom. Building here can be really fun, there's a lot you could do. You could choose one of the buildings to build up or use both. Maybe one could be for your camp ally and one for you, or you could take that a step further and build walls and make an entire little settlement. The interiors already have a lot of shelves and decorations, so you will be able to save on some budget and still have a very cluttered and lived in looking camp. Also the area is pretty safe, usually when I build here I don't get attacked that often. Next up we're heading over to Charleston for another pre-war house that's in great condition. It's right here on the map right next to the Charleston Fire Department and down the street from the Rusty Pick. And once you get here you will come across this beautiful pre-war house. It has a really cool walkway to get to the house and a good sized front porch and you can place your camp module almost anywhere here. On the front porch you have a few pre-placed chairs. And going inside the house there's a living room with a bed and a TV. Also you get this really cool attic area up here and I like to place a tiny generator up here so that way it's hidden away but it can still power the whole house. Going down though you have a kitchen and on the right there's a good sized bathroom. Now building here is pretty fun, I've actually never even seen another camp here before. And it's a bit smaller than the other locations but it's really easy to build around the house. Also, it's really close to the Rusty Pick, so you will almost always get visitors if you place down some camp vendors. And this house is exactly three foundations long. So you can build three foundations on either side of the building and they will just match it perfectly. So you can use this for a vendor area or for some crafting workbenches. And lastly, it's a pretty safe location, I almost never get attacked here. This next one is right here on the map, just north of Camden Park and south of the Nuka Cola plant. And this camp location is another pre-war house that's in good condition, and it has an awesome location right on the river. But walking up the driveway here you get a good sized front porch. Going through the door you get a kitchen and a living room, and you can place your camp anywhere inside. But then there are two other rooms in the house, so starting on the left you have a small bathroom, and heading over to the right you have a bedroom. But my favorite part about this one is definitely the back porch. It has a really nice view of the river. This house is really easy to build in, and again the area is pretty safe. If your camp does get attacked, usually it's just some smaller enemies like wild dogs or scorched. And the interior already has a lot of decorations and chairs and a bed, and all that kind of stuff so you can save on some budget by already having some of the items placed. 
And again, this building is just like the last one. It's almost exactly three foundations wide, so you can build a little crafting area on the back or on the side, and it will match perfectly to the foundations. Overall, I really like this spot, it has a great view, the building is in pretty good condition, and I really enjoy building here. Now before we get to the final pre-existing location, I do have one honorable mention, and it's right here on the map right next to Welch Station, and here you will find this little coffee stand. Now it doesn't look like much, but it comes with this little dude right here named Murgle. It's this small orange cat that lives in the shack, and you can place your camp all around here. Out of all of these spots, this one is probably the most popular and well known just due to Murgle being here. But if you choose to build here, you get this little bar. And heading over to the back, there's a safe back there and some other items. There's also a destroyed shack and this cooking station type thing. There isn't a whole lot at this location, but it did feel wrong not to include this one in a top 5 pre-existing locations video. And now it's time for the final location. This one is right next to Bolton Greens in the forest region, and out of all of these ones, this one is definitely my favorite. It's this giant log cabin, and it's a really good size, so you have this big porch right here that kind of wraps around the entire building. You have a dining room, there's also a living room, and this Wacakami machine doesn't work sadly. But going over here, we do have a closet, and taking a left here, there's a kitchen, a pretty good sized kitchen. Then there is also a bedroom with two bunk beds and a small bathroom. Now going upstairs, there is this really cool little area that you can kind of place a few items in. Then there is also a bedroom with a double bed and this old Mothman Cultist ritual site. Or at least I think it's a Mothman Cultist ritual site. There's a ton of bones and candles and it seems like something that they would do. But going out back here, there is a small back porch. Then there is also this little field dressing station that has a rad stag on it. And going up here, we have the big deck. Now on here, there's a ton of rooms so you can kind of build whatever you want. And it does also have an amazing view of the forest region. And when it comes to placing your camp module, you can pretty much place it anywhere. Just make sure you have the entire building in the build radius. Now one big thing about this location is that it is a random encounter location. So sometimes when you go here, there will be a friendly NPC or a pack of wolves or a trader. But once you place your camp module down, they seem to stop spawning. So if you have some enemies in the cabin when you get here, just clear it out then place your camp down and next time you log in you should be safe and you won't have to deal with the random encounters. Out of all of these locations, this one is definitely the biggest and I think I've only actually seen one or two camps here in all of my years of playing. It's a really cool structure and you will have tons of room to place down items. But that is pretty much going to be it for this video and I really hope that this video helped you find a new spot to build your camp at. It was honestly kind of hard to narrow down pre-existing structures to a top 5 list. There are a ton of cool places to build in this game with pre-war houses, bunkers, and shacks. So if you would like to see a part 2 with this one, do let me know down below. But again, that is pretty much going to be it for this video, so I would like to say thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of the channel members. As Death 93 Loopy, Joe Pervincente, Adam Steinson, Terry Lockridge, Zapper, Robert Kennard, CRM114, Theodore, Slappy Sauce, King Kittens, Omniprotus, Victrix, Argent Deer, Shaky Hands Workshop, Axel, Kevin W, Anna S, Fallout McFly, Network Gate, Gold T, Lanthar, Captain Awesome, Citizen Girl, Heather Henderson, Patrick Ruta, 23 Ice Fire, Jay Smith, Bowser Double Frank, Christy Mellon Schwitz. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys and have a great day.